my name is Maya and welcome to a new video. Depending on how brave <laughs> I've been in the past, this may or may not be my first video in English that I've published to YouTube. Um, so if this is the first video, then welcome. Perhaps you haven't been able to watch my videos before and understand them because they've all been in Swedish. But just this time, um, I wanted to try out uh, speaking in English and I've actually recorded a video in English before, but I, I didn't really like how it turned out. I feel like my accent was kind of off that day. I mean, I still don't have a perfect accent in English, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm born and raised in Sweden with Swedish as my mother tongue. I don't feel like I'm ever gonna have like the perfect English accent, but I'm hoping <laughs> I feel a bit better about it today. I think I was just tired when I recorded the last video. And I still might publish it, but it will probably be after this one. But, but anyway, today um, I'm gonna show you a bit of a book haul. And uh, I'm not gonna show you actually all of the books that I've bought. Um, because I wanted to focus on books that I've bought on second hand. So like really great bargains that I've found in different second hand stores. I haven't done a book haul in a while. That meaning since last year. <laughs> I just haven't been feeling like it. And it doesn't mean that I haven't been buying books because... I certainly have. <laughs> I'm always buying books, but I haven't felt like sharing those books until now. I really love shopping secondhand. Shopping secondhand in my area of Sweden isn't always super easy because I don't live close to like Stockholm, which is where I think the best secondhand stores are found. When I go secondhand shopping, I mostly look for books in English because I prefer reading in English. The kind of books that I'm often on the lookout for are usually not translated to Swedish. Which means that every time I enter a second-hand store, I head directly to the English section in hopes of finding something brilliant and cheap. And that's what I've done for the past two months, mostly. I have a medium-sized stack of books right here uh, that are books that I've shopped from different second-hand stores around my area. And I want to add that I've been cautious when I've been out shopping. I haven't gone too close to people. Uh, most of the stores that I've entered have had pretty few people in them. The restrictions in Sweden may vary from restrictions in other countries, just so that's clear. The Swedish strategy to handle coronavirus has been a bit different, so just just know that. Okay, so the two books that I bought the longest time ago, I bought I think on April 1st or in the beginning of April. And I bought those in Lund, and they are I, Claudius and Claudius the God both by uh, Robert Graves. And these are two books that were written in the 30s or 40s. And I haven't actually known about them for a very long time. I think I found out about these two in maybe December or November of last year. And the reason that I actually found out about them is because I was researching another author, John Williams, uh, who has written one of my favorite books of all time, Stoner. I was looking into an another book by him called Augustus, which is a biography about a man who lived during the Roman Empire era or ancient Rome. Through researching that book, I found these two. And both Augustus and these books about Claudius have been described as some of the best ever written biographies. I became really interested in picking these up and the more I read about them, the more intrigued I became. So these follow Claudius, who was a descendant of Julius Caesar. He became the emperor of Rome kind of against his will. And just the words that are used to describe these books I find so interesting and make me, they make me want to read these books immediately. So here are a few of them. Poison, blasphemy, treachery, incest, black magic and unnatural vice flourish. Insane cruelties are committed. I'm super hyped for these books. Unfortunately, none of them... I think are over 400 pages, so I will have to save them for next year, probably. Once I can read these books, I'm, I'm so excited. I think I will love them. And I think I bought these for 30 crowns together, so that would be, I think, three US dollars? Maybe? I think one US dollar equals around 10 Swedish crowns, so yes. The next book that I bought was His Majesty's Dragon by Naomi Novik. This is also a book that I haven't known about for a super long time, but I read Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik in during this spring, and I really liked her writing style and 
like her way of building that story. So I really want to pick something else up by her. And I found this one in a secondhand store. And I was so happy. I don't know uh, a lot about this particular story other than that there's uh, a war and there are dragons involved. And I think there's some obviously royalty involved as well. Um, so I'm just hoping for some really atmospheric writing, maybe some fantasy politics and a lot of action. And I've also heard that the dragons in this series are supposed to be super cute and adorable. And I think this was close to 30 crowns, maybe 26 or something. Close to three US dollars. Then I picked up a bit of a classic and that is The Stranger by Albert Camus. Albert Camus. This is a bit of a philosophical uh, work from, I'd like to say, the 30s. It's about a man who commits a murder and does not feel guilty about it at all. It was about alienation, about somebody feeling detached from society, not finding sympathy from anyone, uh, maybe having a hard time finding friends. So this man who commits this murder kind of just doesn't care. He doesn't care if he lives or not. He doesn't see any meaning to life. Actually, the reason that I was interested in buying this is because of the cover, because it matches my edition of The Master Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov, which I love. I think these covers are very cool and I'm not ashamed about it. I'm actually very interested in reading more modern classics from the 20th century, so why not pick this one up? I have had some difficulties with reading philosophy works in the past. I'm usually not very entertained or enlightened by them. But maybe this one will be different. It's very short, so I'm hoping I can maybe read it for uh, this summer's reading rush. We'll have to see, but I'm happy to have it. The next book that I bought is also very short. And that is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Mugata. As you can see, it's short. And this is an adult contemporary that was originally written in Japanese. I did study Japanese for two years, but I do not think I could have read and understood the original uh, so, unfortunately. But I really want to read this in English. And this is about a 36-year-old woman who has worked in a convenience store for at least over 10 years. And she is really content with her life. She adores working in this store. But the people around her, her parents, her friends, think it's really odd that she has not married. She doesn't have, like, she hasn't made her own family with kids. And they think her career choice is odd as well. So they sort of expect her to live a different life than she wants to live and is content with living. So that's what this is about. I think it has potential to be very cute and charming and I'm hoping it will make me very happy. The next book is a book in Swedish that I might actually read this year because it's over 400 pages long. Which is my uh, goal for the year. It's to only read books that are over 400 pages long. Except for if I'm participating in the reading rush. So that's just good to know. Um, and the book that I picked up was Min mor mor hälsa och säger förlåt by Fredrik Backman. This book has been translated to English and I believe the title is My grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry. This book follows a seven-year-old girl who had a very close relationship to her grandmother. And when this girl's uh, grandmother passes away, she is given some letters or some notes that tell her to go around to people who this grandmother knew during her life to tell them that her grandmother was sorry or to apologize. I uh, have never completed reading anything by Friedrich Bachmann before. I am like in the middle of listening to another book by him uh, called Britt Marie was here. In English, Britt Marie was here. I like it a fair bit. So I definitely want to pick something else up by him. I also own En man som heter Ove, or in English, A Man Called Ove, which is his most famous work. It's also been made into a movie, but this one is over 400 pages, so I can read it this year. The next book that I picked up matches my hair color. It is Educated by Tara Westover, and this is a kind of unusual book for me to pick up because I very rarely read memoirs. I've read one before by a Swedish author. This is a memoir. Uh, we are being told the story of Tara, West Tara Westover who 
um, lived in America without a birth certificate. So she stayed home her entire childhood and didn't go to any public school. I believe she also had a difficult situation at home with her family. So once she reached a certain age, she, she decided to pack her bags and leave and start a life of her own and do her very best to get an education. And it's about the struggles that she had with all of that. I've heard a great deal about this book. I think this kind of genre, memoirs, is something that I could delve a bit deeper into. I did enjoy the one that I've already read and of course not all memoirs are going to be books that I enjoy, but I'm hoping this one will be. I'm thinking I might read this maybe next year. I'm not sure, but I'm definitely intrigued. So yes, another book on the whole. Yes, indeed. This is The Air Affair by Jasper Ford. And this is the first book in the series of maybe seven books, I think, called Thursday Next. This takes place, I believe, in a slightly altered reality um, in the 1980s. And in this other reality, uh, books or literature is a very important and big part of society. Everybody idolizes literature and there's like great debates about uh, classic literature and stuff like that. I, I believe there are also like either fantasy or science fiction elements of this story because I believe I've read that time travel is part of the story. And also, uh, all of a sudden characters start being stolen, so they are removed from classics. The Air Affair. Mm -hmm. Our main character, Thursday Next, uh, is her name. She sets out to figure out the mystery and get back the stolen characters. I've actually only heard about this in a uh, book unhauling video by The Little Book Owl. I became kind of intrigued when she talked about it. I know she did unhaul it, but I feel like she didn't think it was objectively bad. And I love the cover and I think it could be like a really fun, odd sort of book. I'm going to give this a shot eventually. Not this year, but another year hopefully this was five crowns which is so little money <laughs> i could just not resist buying it the next book was also five crowns and that is three dark crowns by kenda blake and this is in such good condition that i don't think anyone has read it and this is quite a recent release i think it's from 2016 and the series has been completed now i think this was published at like the beginning of the darker themed ya wave kind of which is a uh, trend that I appreciate and want to read more of. We follow uh, a sort of competition. So every generation of uh, royals, three or like a set of triplets are born. I think they're always girls and when they reach a certain age they are expected to compete against each other in a game of life and death to sort of win the role of becoming the new uh, queen. They each have different abilities that kind of give them strengths in this competition. I think we just begin the competition in this one and then we continue with it in the upcoming books. I'm just very interested in this because it was so hyped for a while. I kind of want to see what the hype is about. The last thing or the last set of books that I bought, I actually purchased, purchased just yesterday. And those were the four first books in the Blue Bloods series. And those are Blue Bloods. Masquerade, Revelations, and the Van Allen Legacy. Van Allen? Van Allen? Something like that. And these are all written by Melissa de la Cruz. This is a series that started coming out around 2010, I believe, maybe even earlier. And they are about vampires. They were kind of riding that wave of uh, vampire books that came out around then. And these haven't got the greatest ratings. But I'm really loving another uh, vampire series right now, that is Bloodlines by Richelle Mead. And uh, the new Twilight book is also coming out later this year, Midnight Sun. So I'm just like in that kind of vampire mood and I'm going to eventually want to read these. And I really love that I could find the, uh, or at least half the series at the same time with matching covers. What are these books about? Well, uh, we follow a girl who on her 15th birthday, or when she's 15, she finds out that she is part of a group of vampires called Blue Bloods. 
and they are sort of a, a secret group of vampires that live in New York. They're very fancy, rich, live a luxurious life. So she kind of joins this elite of vampires and stuff happens, of course, as they always do in books, or you should at least. I'm hoping this will be a series that I can eventually maybe binge. We'll see. There are seven books in the series, so I don't own the complete series yet, of course. But they can still be both in these covers, which is great. I think I paid just over 100 crowns for them, so around $10. Those are most of the books that I have purchased on second hand in April and May. Thank you for watching this video. I, I hope my English has been more understandable in this video than the last one that I recorded. Not that you would know, probably, because I haven't published the last one. Anyway, let me know if you have read any of the books that I showed you today or if you're interested in maybe reading them and I will see you in another video. I hope you have a good day. Bye!